everybody, how you doing? This is Rivers Pierce from Boomtown here on another episode of Driven. I've got my friend Tim Heil. What's up from, guys? From Austin, Texas, where we're coming to you from uh, from kind of sunny Austin, Texas today. Um, but beautiful, Tim, beautiful Austin. It is beautiful today, isn't it? Uh, so Tim, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself as we do on this show and uh, and we'll go from there. All right. Well, my name's Tim, as River said. I'm, I'm uh, born and raised right here in Austin and got into real estate at a young age. I started when I was 21 years old. I graduated college and, and um, got in right right uh, at the bottom of the market. It's probably, <laughs> probably the, probably right the when, best right when Boomtown time. started. Yeah, right when Boomtown got going too. Honestly, like people are like, oh man, that, that, that sucks. That's, that's, uh, that's a tough time to get in, but it was probably the easiest time or probably the best time to get in because it was, you know, the average days on market, I don't know if it was six months, but it certainly felt like six months. <laughs> Um, you know, it was, everything was hard and I didn't know any better. I didn't know yeah. anything. So, um, you know, kind of started learning, started coming from a very skill, skill set base, you know, skill, skills base instead of, uh, instead of having the easy road. I yeah. think the, I think the hardest time to get in is when you, uh, when the market was good right before it crashed. Right. Right. Like right uh, now. Yeah, or exactly. When, yeah. When, when <laughs> people are making money, you yeah. know, and selling, buying houses. So yep. you were what nine years in? Yeah, I was, thirty now. Um, yeah, but I'm coming up on my, I guess, coming up on my ninth year, man. Yeah, okay. about eight years, eight and a half years. So um, it's been good. It's been, you know, I started out, um, I cold called for three and a half years straight. Um, you know, that was just I didn't know any better. I, I you know, yeah. Uh, when Boomtown had a wait list, I was on it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the glory days. Yeah, but. yeah, I was, I was on the on the wait list for two for two years, and <laughs> and. Uh, you know, until I could get on, I, I uh, just just uh, cold called. So generated generated uh, five qualified seller leads a day. That was my thing. And and while I worked on while I worked on my five lead for my five seller leads a day, um, it took me about took me about three hours. Once I got consistent, then I'd spend an hour on my on my follow up every day. And then and then um, over time, that pipeline just completely yeah. exploded for me. And and you still kind of pre preach that five oh, yeah. qualified a day everybody right? in our in our company our, our entire team and all of our locations I mean we, we call it our proven path and the proven path is is you know that what we've what we've boiled down from all of our numbers from years and years of, of studying it is that um, essentially the number of nurtures that an agent generates on a monthly basis almost always equivalents you know to the number of uh, closed deals they have on a monthly mm -hmm. basis and so we have the you know the three month plan, the four month plan, the five month plan, and we train to it, and we build our systems around it, and, and uh, we're we're totally dedicated to that concept. So, and before we get too far, let's explain. A nurture for you is what? Really, you know, it, it's really just a qualified lead that I've spoken to. I've qualified it against whatever my key criteria are, right? So. Um, <laughs> This is what happened for me was I was putting everybody in my pipeline for follow up, uh -huh. and there is nothing more demotivating <laughs> to uh, than than opening up your lead follow up and talking to a bunch of random people that yeah. aren't motivated to buy or sell. Yeah. Nothing more demotivating than that. So I just got basically put together five key criteria points around motivation, time frame, um, their willingness to you know if they're already obligated to another realtor or not. Uh, you know when they want to follow when they want a follow up call, mm -hmm. um, contact info, that type of stuff, and and as long as I got that information, then it, then I deemed that a nurture, yep. and and um, you know the goal is rather than focusing on number of contacts a day, or rather than focusing on the number of uh, the number of hours I lead generated or something like that, I, I focused on the number of qualified, at that time sellers, but now with our agents, it doesn't matter if it's a buyer or a seller, the point is a qualified um, prospect that you're, that you're, that you're, that you've already spoken to and put in your pipeline for future follow-up, adding to that, to that uh, count every single day, you know, we say the quality and the quantity of your pipeline is your business. That's mm -hmm. all, that's what you've got. Mm -hmm. And so every day, the question is, what did I do today to move my business forward? Well, um, you know, maybe you maybe you put a, put a, a client under contract. Well, you already had that client. Mm. You know, maybe you. Oh, uh, it's not moving it forward so much. Yeah, that's, just, that's just that's taking care of business. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just taking care of business. So, you know, I might sell ten houses. I mean, I think in my in my prime, I think I I think I sold when I was still in production. I sold thirty one listings in one month. That was my wow. that was my best month. But the thing is, that didn't excite me because that was already business that 
I, I'd already generated you that. You already piece. sweat for that. Distance. Yeah, putting that under contract was just that was just you know mm -hmm. inevitable. I just needed to get it done. So wh whether it happened all in one month or two months, that that didn't excite me. What excited me every day, what got me going, was knowing I increased my pipeline by X. Right. And and right. and being consistent to that over a long period of time actually built, was uh, was the was was what caused the explosive growth in right in my because business. eventually it goes like that oh yeah if you can yeah that. year year yeah year one year one was was here year two was here and then year three was like here. Right, right right it was it was because you built up this latent momentum that's just waiting there to yes. be, to, to buy and sell it's the compound effect man if, yes. if, you, if you if you haven't read the compound effect by darren hardy actually funny enough i'll just i've actually never read it but i, <laughs> I but, haven't read it but, but i'm always talking about compound interest and, sure. and how it's just the, it's the exact same way and then i came across this book and i started reading like the little, little summary of it now i follow darren hardy all the time I and mean, the guy is the guy is, uh, he's so dialed in, but he basically writes about the compound effect, basically mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the Chinese bamboo tree, you know, how it grows. It's like, it's, I think it's, some, the story goes something like, uh, I think it takes five years to sprout its first, mm. um, its first piece. And then, and then over the course of the next 30 days, the, the thing just blows huh. up. And so it's, did, did it take that. five years or did it take 30 days? You know, right, and, right, right. and what, you know, it's the exact same way with building your pipeline. It's, it, it's all about pipeline maturity, right? So generating leads used to be the thing that, uh, that I always used to focus on, just generate leads, generate leads. Well, now, especially with a system like Boomtown, you turn the leads up, you turn the leads down. I mean, it's a faucet. Mm -hmm. The, the, uh, where you really make the difference in your business is, is by actually turning that lead into a qualified nurture and then right. following up with the nurture. And that lead is just a means to an end. The lead is just to get them into the database. Yeah. And I think that's where people get so wrapped up. They're so busy chasing that hot lead yes. that they let the rest of them just go. Yeah. They fall out of the leaky funnel. Well, I've got, I've got a good friend of mine here in town that um, we used to compete against each other like crazy, man. Okay. And and uh, I say compete, he kicked my butt all the time. <laughs> Seriously, um, you know, because we'd go out on appointments and he would, it was like he would always win at the listing. And he came mm -hmm. up to me the other day and he said, he, he, he came, he heard me talking about the concept of nurtures and, and all that. I think he came to my real estate machine class. And he said, he came up after, he said, you know, the difference between you and me is that we have a we had a different definition of a lead, and I said, well, what do you, what do you mean? He said, well, he said we used to compete against each other all the time, and he said I, I would win a lot of those appointments, but I'm still out there on the appointments, mm. and I don't ever see you anymore. <laughs> and I and I kind of laughed, and he said, no, I'm serious. He said I don't ever see you anymore because you built up a big you built up a pipeline that allowed you to hire people to it. Mm -hmm. To work it, it was leverage. It was a leverage point, and um, and all of a sudden you were you were going out and meeting with people six months later, nine months later, a year later, and you were the only one out there on the appointment. For me, he said I was coached by a company that told me if they're not willing if they're not willing to uh, list their home in, in in the next like two to three weeks, hang up and move on. Oh. And so he said, you so you just end up chasing your tail. That's right. And yeah. so he said I was crushing the, the you know the thirty day business. But I was missing out on everything else, and, and what, what by focusing on on the long term follow up game, you actually created not not only found found yourself on appointments with no competition, but you actually created a a, a pipeline database that was so valuable. Right. You could use it to recruit other people into the business, oh. and ultimately not be the guy to call it, not be the guy to add to it, right. not be the guy to go on the appointments anymore. Right. So let all right. So let's unpack that a little bit. So you you basically. Quick and dirty, like you know, you call you cold call it for three years. You you kind of figure it out. Wait, I've got to build this database of people, and that will exponentially help me. So from there, you build a team, right? And now you've got yeah. Well, here here's what here's the way. What's the next step there? Yeah, the way that it looked is is I didn't even know it would happen this way. I I uh, you know fortunately was doing the right things, but didn't even quite realize that it was gonna it was gonna turn out this well. What, my first year, I generated five nurtures a day. So for 250 work days, it was somewhere around 1,200 nurtures uh, by the end of the year. And I only sold nine homes oh. from those 1,200 nurtures. Nine homes it's came from It's going to be a bit that. disheartening. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> the next year, it was 55, and then oh. it was over 100, and then oh. it was over 200. So it, it compound. started compounding, compound, right? <laughs> but, what, but what happened was, in year two, I had 2,400. In year three, I had 3,600. Not only did I have 3,600, but I also had enough deal flow that I could afford somebody. I could afford two, two things. Now, financially, I could afford 
uh, a couple of people to take over the job of adding the five a day so mm. I didn't have to keep doing it. And then I had so many leads in there to follow up with that I was able to go recruit top agent talent oh. at a large enough split where it made sense to me to bring them in and have them work those leads. Because you say, look, I've got business for you right now. Exactly. And you can, you can charge a higher split. Exactly. So, so I was able to, it, it, a lot of people try and force growth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something I learned was, was put pressure on lead generation. You know, Gary Keller really, really has hammered this home for me as a, as a mentor of mine and just somebody who speaks wisdom in this business all yeah, the time. Absolutely. You know, he, he wrote, he wrote down one time, um, he wrote down, uh, he said, don't let, don't try and force growth for success. Let your success force your growth. Mm. And really what I thought, what I find funny about Gary is he knows, he knows the secret that success is boring. Success is not sexy. Success is boring. So he just comes up with clever ways to say the same thing so that we right. finally get it through our thick right. heads, right? And right. so I, I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, it all makes sense finally now, you know? And what, what he's saying is, he's saying is mm -hmm. put pressure on the things that matter most, and when you nail those, your growth will just be organic. Right. And what's right, funny right, is, right. you know, at the start, my first few years in real estate, I did that. Just naturally, I, I, I hired out of need. I hired out of absolute necessity just to help manage the chaos. Yeah. Then I got to this point in my business where I started to try and get creative. I started to add positions I didn't need. Uh, I started to, uh, uh, you know what I mean? And I looked up. And that and, wasn't, wasn't good or no, on that. No, that's trying to force growth for success. It, that, didn't, that didn't work. Mm. Um, you know, you gotta put pressure on the things that matter most and yeah, make, yeah, yeah, make yeah. that force you to grow. And, that's that's and that, great. And that's true in any business. Yes. It's true in any business. You know, I've learned that in, in multiple businesses that I've gone to gone to start and gone to work is when you put pressure on the things that matter most, it will or it will force you to organically grow and that is the most healthy way to grow up to, to build a business. And so those things that matter most in this space. They're the non sexy things that nobody wants cold to do. Cold calling. Well, it's, it's, not that, it's not that it's cold calling. You can get your nurtures from internet leads. You can get them from yeah. open houses. You can get them from your sphere. Yeah. I don't care where you get them from, but the point is um, too many agents run around talking about, well, I lead generate four hours a day or I make X amount of contacts, uh, right. you know, or, I, or you know, how long, how, I work 14 hours a day, whatever. Like there's a lot of ways to judge how, how much you, work, you right. work or how right. much effort you put forth. But the reality is you got to put pressure t towards results. Yes. And our business is such a lagged business. If you put pressure on closings, well, I don't really know how to do that. I don't know how to put pressure on my, my the number of deals I close. Right. So you got to put really control that one. Right. You got to put pressure on an action that you know is going to give you a result. But ultimately for me, I was, my daily result is the number of qualified nurtures that I add to my pipeline that weren't there the day before. When I right. focus on that, right. And, and I can see that moving forward every day, every week, every month, every right. year. Um, that's the pre that's what you force. And then when you get to the next level, um, when you get to the next level, you 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 put you put your pressure on your talent, right? right. It, it, right. it goes right. from your leads to your talent. And and then what that means is don't go hire a ton of people. Hire the right people. And if they're the right people, <laughs> right. they'll hire the next layer of people. So, all right. So so and at some point then. So let's talk about tech then a little bit, yeah. Because obviously we know you you know what hasn't changed. You need nurtures, you need people. Those yeah. haven't changed in fifty years. Yeah. Right? So what tech's done, what tech has done. So where do you get your nurtures from? You can get your nurtures from anywhere, but with, with in the absence of tech, you've got to do the the nasty things like cold calling, like what right. I did for three and a half years, yeah. right? And that's honestly it's it's hard it's hard work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, what tech has done is it's basically made it it's made it easier and faster to get that nurture. Now I can I can turn on home valuation leads or I can turn right. up uh, my, my, my IDX leads, right? And all of a sudden, you know, if I can have, if it took me, because if I cold call a neighborhood, let me tell you the numbers on this. If I cold call a neighborhood, it's gonna take me roughly, um, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to dial 10 people to get one to answer, mm -hmm. okay? So if I dial 10 to get one answer, and I need about 20 answers to get a nurture, so that means 20 times 10 is 200. So I need to dial 200 to get a nurture, right? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, if I can turn up my home valuation leads or if I can turn up my, my IDX leads, I don't need to dial 200, 200 to get a nurture. Maybe I only need to dial 20 to get a nurture, right? Right, or 10 to get a nurture. All of a sudden, my efficiencies are just through the roof, right? Um, and so we, we talked about this a couple months back, where basically 
the, the, there's these things that just haven't changed generally about the industry. What tech has done is allowed you to scale it exponentially, to leverage. You that's know, right. You get leverage all of a sudden. Well, that's what we were talking about the other day, how the number one agent in, I think, in Remax across the world or across the country, you know, back 15, 20 years ago yeah. before the internet was 100 units a year, right? Right. The top team. You couldn't really do more. And that was like, physically. A, that was a big team, right? Yeah. And Yeah, exactly. And and so, you know, just your basic things like email, you know, <laughs> or text message, like those, sure. those allow you to go from, those just drastically increase your efficiencies. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden you throw in the ability to generate an internet lead. And it, it didn't create more sure. sales, it just created the ability to, to find the people who are moving right. at, at a, just an exponential rate. So. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the second thing, though, Rivers, is, the, is um, conversion. So you generate these nurtures, you, you identify them, you put them all in a system. Well, the, the challenge is, especially on the buy side, we joke in the industry, buyers are liars, right? Like, sure. typically, if a seller tells you, we want to move in May when the kids are graduating, like, they'll stay pretty true to that. But a buyer says, we want to move in May when the kids are graduating, you call them in May, they're like, oh, you know what? This house came up. We just, yeah. it was, we had to go for it. We fell in love. We bought it. Yeah. And so, you know, buyers are like, <laughs> at, any, at any given moment, you right. might miss the boat on a buyer. Right. So what, what, what you know, uh, software like Boomtown does is it helps, it helps you to, you might have a follow-up call set scheduled for May, but Boomtown's gonna tell you, actually, this person's been hot on the website. They are, you know, they're lo they've looked at this same house four times in a row, or they, they were just on the site 30 seconds ago. Like, you don't have a call with them till May, but you pro even though, and the thing is, when you're generating a lot of leads, you'll have thousands of thousands of leads in your system, right? Right, and so. You're, you're not gonna just mine through that system manually on a regular basis, you're just gonna wait till that follow-up call comes up. Well, the things like the now wall, the opportunity wall that, right. pop, that pop up and, and tell you who you should be talking to now, even if you don't have a call set up, scheduled up, those things those things not, not only save you time, but actually make you more effective um, in production. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and, and, and I tell people like, at this point in the game, in the real estate game, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not using technology that can do that for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's I just mean, like, how do you expect to win? And, yeah, and I mean, even... I can't even imagine... <laughs> I can't imagine being right. in real estate without without leveraging technology. And, and you know, I guess you're, you're kind of a, a poster child for this as well, is that if people are not thinking about teams, like really taking them seriously like they should have been even five years ago, yeah. they're, they're also head is in the sand. I mean, it's just... Yeah, well, team. So team, the reason I love, I love, um, you know, I, I'm a Keller Williams agent, and, yeah. and I love Keller Williams because, you know, it, it's not about all the bells and whistles or the things that they, the technology or anything. What I love about Keller Williams is that everything in the company is about lives worth living. Um, it ultimately comes back to this mission statement of lives worth living. Well, how do we, how do we build lives worth living through our careers? We're not going to do it by being the best producer, the best salesperson. We're going to do it by by being a business person, by by leverage. We're going to do it by by um, leveraging activities out mm -hmm. so that we can build, you know, make more money and less time over time, okay. which allows us to actually achieve our mission in life and our, our vision for ourselves and and ultimately have a life worth living. Well, how how do you do that? You do it as a real estate agent. You do that through building a team, and not you know, there's lots of lots of ways you can build a team and and you know I, I, I believe that Gary has kind of shown us Gary Keller has shown us um, the right way to go from I do it I'm a producer I do it to we do it or a team to they do it I now own a business mm. and so many I people, do it I, we do it they, they do, do it. it and 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 ult what, what, I, what I see is so many people try to go from I do it to they do it and they end up skipping a lot of steps that that cause it to be an unhealthy business. And so, you know, following following a model that's been tried and true, right? Um, you know, is and it is tried and true. It is tried and, and true. We were just talking about it. It's like it's right there. If you want to follow <laughs> the millionaire real estate agent, is available to anyone that wants to read it. That's right. The model, the playbook, is right there. That's right. And whether you're with Keller Williams or not it's been written yeah well, we we're done we were joking it's like the top agents in the country whether whether you're with KW or not is irrelevant it's the top agents in the country right. are following the same when model. you peel back and, and I have the luxury of seeing the top agents in the country across all of the different yeah. you know, franchises independent so it's like same there, model there's a model right and, there. and it's, yep. it's 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 operationalizing real estate turning it into a business instead of a solo practitioner kind of right. mindset. That's, that's it. what's happened. That's it. It's 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 
you know, here's the thing is there are so many teams out there, but when you're in the world of we do it, that's like having a job with expenses. Mm -hmm. That's the work. Like I'd rather just have a job. You know, if you just work for somebody and have a job, at least you don't have any liability. <laughs> right. You know, the worst place in the world to be is in the we. Mm -hmm. You know, is in the is in is the team. It's that we call it a team, but the goal is to really turn it into a, a business. Yeah. And and that 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 is um, going from you know practitioner to practitioner with helpers to you know you actually you actually succeed through other people and that's that's a it's not an easy thing to do it's a right. there's, there's a there's a learning curve going from producer to to leader and then those other people are making their own lives that's right leader, that's basically. right yeah and your job becomes supporting them your job becomes becomes helping them live the lives that they want to live and that's that's a fun world to get into but it's a different world than production it yeah. requires waking up in the morning and thinking about different things right it's not five nurtures a day it's not five nurtures a day. You know, I talk about it all day long be until I'm blue in the face because I want for my people, I know that for them to be successful, I can help them and give them the tools, yeah. um, get them on Boomtown. I can I can do all the things that I can do all the things that I know will help them. Yeah. But if they don't show up in the morning with the right mindset, going after the right daily results, they're not going to they're not going to see the success that they want to see for their lives, at least in this business. Yeah. So well, let's talk about that for a second because mindset is a big thing for you and it's a. I mean, it's a big thing in general that people, they talk about it a lot. They don't do it a lot, right? Yeah. And so, so for mindset, what is your, when you're coaching on mindset, what is that, what is that, you know, Man, we, direction? We, we have, we have a couple of key things on mindset. So the first one, so this is all part of our proven path that we, we talk about in our, in our, our company all the time. And so, so I mean, the, the very first place we start is we we have five core beliefs um, it, it, that we that we just hammer home in our company, and these are just th lessons that I learned along the way that that we were talking about organically and kind of turned them into these five core beliefs. But the very first one is that a big why will pull you through any what and how. Okay. A big enough why will pull you through any what and how. And so what that what that means is if you are not super in tune with why you're showing up every day. Um, why are you showing up? Dude, this stuff is so hard. Like, if simple, <laughs> not easy, right? Yeah. Success is simple, yes. not easy. It is not easy. Every day is a cluster. Every day, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to use good language here, but every day is hard, man. <laughs> let and, it go. If and, you need to yeah. let it go. <laughs> and so, so I mean, um, it, 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 it isn't easy. And if you are not in tune with why you're showing up, and it doesn't have to be this altruistic, I want to save the dolphins or I want to, you know, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, yeah, yeah, for yeah. me as a younger, as a, as a younger guy in real estate getting going, it was just about, it was about getting out of production. Like that was my oh, big why, right? Oh, okay. It was like, okay. I love real estate, but I didn't love being in the sales role, you know? Right. And so it, for me, it was about getting out of production and in order to it, every day, it, it was really more than getting out of production. It was even about, it was, it was about, um, uh, mm. building a team, building a business. Right. And so every day I'm sitting there on the dialer and I'm making my calls and I'm doing my work, but really all I can think about is my future self running this business. Right. I was so in tune with it, so obsessed thinking about it all the time. Um, when I was driving home from work, I was thinking about it. When I was driving to a mm. listing appointment, I was thinking about it. When I was on the dialer, I was thinking about it. You know, I'm constantly, I was constantly thinking about this, this, my future self in five years. And that's why I'm doing it this thing you through. for that. And it just pulled me through all the crap. Right. right. So why, if, if you don't know the why, what is it? Why? Yeah. Big enough why will pull you through any what and how. So okay. we start there. You gotta, okay. you gotta get, you gotta get your why. And we've got a whole, a whole, um, a whole method to do that. In fact, right. if you, if you, you don't have to be with Keller Williams, but, but get with the Keller, get with somebody from Keller Williams, go to this class called quantum leap. Quantum leap is all about helping you discover your, your general purpose. Right. 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 So, so that, so that we start there. Um, the second thing is, is you've got to have, you've got to have clear goals, right? So once you know why you're doing it, you got to have clear goals because you're, 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 and it can't be a one year goal. I want to make a hundred thousand this year. You got to know at least a five year goal, yeah. at least a five year goal where you intend to be that you can write it down and then you can figure out what do I need to do this year to be on track for that. And you break it all the way down to a monthly. We call it a 411 mm. in our company. A 411, you've got four weeks, okay. one month, and one year. It's a one page goal setting sheet. And every single month, you throw it away and you start a new one. And so it's four weeks are on the bottom of the page, okay. one month, and one year. And essentially, your year doesn't change. Just every month, you're updating what you need to do this month to be to on get track. To year. Yeah. The year and then every week, now your year and your month are goals. 
but your weekly is all action commitments. Okay. So, so, uh, so for example, you know, five nurtures a day or, you know, it's, it's things I'm going to commit to doing on a daily or weekly that you basis. you know, pushing that hard on those will get me to my monthly. results. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, and so, so that's the next thing. Um, and then once you figure out your why and your, and, and your, and your vision, which are, you know, your goals, where, um, what you need to accomplish, then, uh, where we focus is there, there's, there's some other key things we talk about. Number one, consistency is the secret sauce to success. Okay. Consistency. So everybody wants the next shiny object, you know, all the techno you can't, you can't run a real estate business in today's world effectively without the right technology. All the technology in the world won't solve every single problem. You, yeah. you've got to understand like, um, you know, we talk about, we talk about on our team, how the difference between a consumer mindset and a producer mindset, we are, we are grown up to, we, we've, uh, our whole lives we're consumers, right? Our whole lives we are taught to, everything's on demand, yep. you know, transportation on demand, Especially food now. on demand, uh, music on demand, yeah. uh, movies on demand, yes. TV on demand, everything's we on live demand. live in an on demand society yeah. now. <laughs> Everything is when I want it right now. Yeah. And it's, and it's not even that expensive, right? right? So the the when you go into producer world, so we talk up to our new agents about this all the time. So if you're if you're a rainmaker watching this, if, you, if you've got a team, this is something I'd really encourage you to talk to your to your new agents about. Is when they come on board, you have to rewire their mindset to understand that that um, being a producer is the actually the opposite of being a consumer. And 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 the the, the core belief we talk about there is that fulfillment requires delayed gratification which requires faith in a plan so so f let, so if we talk about if we break that down what is fulfillment so this is my, my opinion my perspective is that the, the difference between happiness and fulfillment happiness is getting what I want now fulfillment is getting what I really want okay right okay so I, I want right now I'm hungry I want to eat this cheeseburger but I what I really want is to be in shape yeah right yes so fulfillment would be being in shape yeah. Which which is actually don't eat the cheeseburger. Happiness is just eat the, eat yeah, the cheeseburger, yeah, right? Yeah. That's so, immediate gratification. Exactly. And so as consumers, it's all I want it now. Give me immediate gratification. As as producers, it's the total opposite, man. It's get five nurtures a day if it takes you ten freaking hours and do it every day, mm. but not for three months, do it for three years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden your entire life has changed. Yeah. And nothing will ever be the same ever again. And you never have to do that or have any of those. Uh, problems you used to have again right right and 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 but that is being willing to ha to go for delayed gratification yeah, and yeah. here's to go for delayed gratification you got to have faith not faith in anything not faith in whatever anybody tells you but faith in a proven plan so you got to uh, fought you got to figure out a plan that somebody um that, that has been tried and true millionaire real estate agent right you know, exactly. our proven path five nurtures right. a day whatever you know you gotta you gotta figure out the plan and you've got to buy into it and you don't right. question the plan. You right. don't question it after six months or after nine months or right. after a year. Question it after three years. I've never had anybody for two years or three years look up and go, man, I followed that plan and uh, you know, I just did everything that, that, was, that was a part of that plan and I failed. Right. Never, never, never even come close to anybody having that, having that response, right. you know? Right. So delayed gratification requires, or uh, uh, fulfillment requires delayed gratification, which requires faith in a plan. Um, and then, and then, uh, um, you know, consistency is the secret sauce to success. We talk about there of all the shiny objects out there, there are only a few that, uh, there are only a few things that, that really, really, really matter that make just massive differences. Mm -hmm. And the compound effect that we talked about earlier, it comes from consistency. It comes from, it comes from doing the same boring thing over right. and over right. and over and over again. You know, it's it's funny. It's like, you know, you, you as a Keller Williams agent, for years and years and years, I'd come to Keller Williams conventions, and I'm like, man, can't wait to hear what Gary Keller is going to say today. And he gets up <laughs> and he says, why aren't you lead generating? <laughs> why is nobody, you know? And it, yeah. he says the same, same thing. thing every year, right? Because and you look at him, and you realize, <laughs> man, he's one of the most successful people that have touched the the, the business of real estate. <laughs> Oh, it's because he realizes that success is boring and it's not sexy. And the, the sexier you try and make it, right. 
the more prone you are to failure. Yeah. You know, if you look at the startup world, how many how many companies, Rivers, I mean, you might know, you probably don't know, but how many how many real estate tech companies out there have tried to build a CRM? Oh, right. Oh, a ton of them. Probably thousands. Yes. And how many have actually made it successfully, uh, made a successful right. product that's actually made a drastic impact in real estate agents? Right. Well, because the, because innovation is a, is a what, a 99% failure rate? Yeah. I mean, it, and that doesn't mean don't go innovate. It just means, it just means start with a base foundation of what's tried and true and be consistent in that and then innovate and know that each time you innovate, you're probably going to screw it up nine times out of 10. Yes. And too many times we, we, well, I could do, I could do what's proven, but I think I've got this better <laughs> idea over here. I'm going to try that. No, exactly. Exactly. And, and we were talking, it's like, it's, uh, Tom Ferry says rip off and duplicate R and D. Like it's not broken. Yeah. Just do and and it's the same. And, and we've you know Boomtown has made. When we try to sit back and say, real estate agents would really like this thing. Yeah. Right. We usually don't get it right. Right. When we look at what their problems are, when we listen to them and say, how can we help? Where are the gaps? Where are the problems here? That's when we win. That's yeah. when when you make something that people it's engaging with it's solving their problems it's operationalizing you know it's it's woven into the fabric of their business at that point you yeah. know and you know, that's the way that yeah so again you need to be looking at technology the same way consistently leveraging the technology you wait weave it into it's like breathing yeah. it's like part of your day you sit down you log in it's the consistency of using so, the product so well. I call I teach this class the real estate machine and I and I talk about I just call it the CRM habit so the CRM habit is when I first got a, my, my very first CRM, um, I think it was like, I can't remember what it was, but I think it was top producer or something. It was yeah. like, it just a, sure. your basic, your basic, yep. put a, put a task in there, put a, put a person in and schedule a follow call. Yep. But I thought that the CRM was going to do all these things for me. I, I, I wasn't really <laughs> sure. I'd never used one before, so I wasn't right. really sure, but I, I, I thought that there was a way, like like I had to just follow the process that it laid out in front of me or something. I didn't realize that I have to choose how I'm going to adopt this thing, yeah. and I have to, you know, if it's only going to help me to the level that I'm consistent with the information that I put in it and right. how I use it and how often I use it, right? So, you know, I thought it was so cool that you could sort by people's birthdays, but when I didn't put people's birthdays in there, that didn't feature work. didn't do anything for me, right? <laughs> so, so I realized I had to build a habit around how I was gonna use the CRM. Yeah. And the more complicated I tried to make it, <clears throat> the less successful that I would be. So what I, so what I did was I, 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 I made a, I mean, just a couple of basic things. Number one, um, my, my buddy came in my office one day, he's in, he was in med school, and you know he's like my smart friend who I was trying to impress, and he walks in, he's like, dude, you're such a realtor. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? He's like, you got sticky notes everywhere, this place is a mess. <laughs> well, what I realized was, I literally had notes of like people's contact info and like scribbled everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, no, don't touch that. Don't touch anything there. Like that's, <laughs> this that's is my system. Yeah, that's good information. <laughs> what I realized was, you know, I, the, the reason I was waking up in the middle of the night with sweats because mm. I forgot to call that person or I lost that other person's contact info or whatever, I would just realize it out of nowhere right. um, because I wasn't being consistent in organizing my stuff. The CRM's not going to do it for me. So, um, so the first part of the habit is that, mm. is that before the end of the business day, everybody goes into the CRM and all paper gets thrown away. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's just a habit that I created for myself so that I had no paper. I had right. no, their contact information, their notes and a follow-up date went in. Yep. And and that was number one, whether it was a sign call or a guy I met in the cab right. Doesn't or matter. whatever, right? Um, the second thing is every day at 11 o'clock, no matter what, I stop what I'm doing, I go to my follow-up for the day and I make all my follow-up calls, no mm. matter what. So, so I have two habits. Everybody goes in with a follow-up date before the end of the day, and 11 o'clock a.m. every day, no matter what, is my follow-up time. And the, by, by treating my... Now, there were additional things I did with my CRM. I started categorizing it better, and I started following a method, a process that I built for myself in it. But but the key things were, were that. And it, and most agents, when they first adopt a... a, a, a um, you know, the more complex, the more the CRM does for you, right? So yeah, when most yeah, agents yeah. adopt a Boomtown, right. um, for example, they, they, I think they probably think a lot like I did, which is that the system's going to do it for me. Right. But really, the system is a tool that I can choose to leverage to the extent that I'm willing to invest in it. Yep. And and so I think it's just really important that 
um, that agent that we that we that we know that that we're clear about yeah. that. And it's I still just a tool. About that. It's still just a tool. And I mean, the, the good thing is now, like Boomtown, it's smarter than it was five years ago. Oh, definitely yeah. ten years ago, it literally was just a leads management system. Now, now you log in and, day, and it tells you tells call you this guy, do. don't call that guy, <laughs> right? Call, right? Which absolutely. helps, which absolutely helps, big time. Yeah. But you still have to develop your process. You yes. still got to decide. Okay. Um, people that I put in new status, this is what that means to me. Yes. People that I put right. in qualify status, this is what that's going to mean right. to me. I've got to decide what that is, you know, and then stick to it, and then and stick be to consistent it. with it every yeah. single day. Consistent. Right. You're yep. you're you're spot on there. All right. So it's it's November. Well, we're filming this in November. We're running up against the end of the year. Um, obviously, it's time to be planning for next year. You should already be ahead of that. Yeah. Um, you should be be well into that process. So in, in your business and planning for next year, what are you seeing as, as maybe it's a tech trend, maybe it's an agent trend, maybe it's not to making any changes. What are you seeing kind of happening uh, that you're going to be focusing on to grow your business? Obviously, you, you're expanding uh, you know, into what, eight markets now, 10 markets, something yeah. like that. But yep. what do you kind of see on the horizon that people need to be aware of and thinking about? Well, a couple of things. You know, I, I think that long term, what, what, I'm, what we're seeing is that more technology, everybody's all freaking out that technology is going to displace the real estate agent. Right? Right. Um, you know, kind of the way that, just an extension of what we were talking about before, the, the better the technology is, the less the real estate agent has to do, the more organized the real estate agent can be, yeah. which means we're able to do more deals. So the way we talked about it before was the top Remax agent in the world did 100 deals, uh -huh. and now the top Remax agent in the world does 2,000 deals, let's say, right? 20 times. And, and so, but commissions haven't changed, right? And so, um, I, I, you can start to see it trending. You know, where the more technology is able to do, the more deals a given team or brokerage or even agent is going to be able to do um, in the same amount of time for the same amount of money. Let's say so. So, what's most likely what I what I foresee happening is that. There, there is continuing to be more and more pressure around commissions, uh -huh. which means you know we've got to prepare for what would that look like five years from now, three years from now, who knows what, who knows what, what would that look like if commissions were less, mm -hmm. but we were doing more units. Now the number of units may not increase. Probably what will happen is the onesie twosie real estate agents will, will get out Go of the away. business. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so what what I'm starting to look at is is I, I see that from one angle and then from another angle what I've noticed is that my top converters my top lead converters my top referral um, my, my top referred agents um, and so on and so forth are, are my proven my best agents the ones that have the ones that um, have been in the business for a long time that really know their stuff right yep. and so what I believe is that it, it's gonna be more become more and more challenging for a new agent mm. um, to succeed in real estate and and for a onesie twosie agent to succeed in real estate. Right. And I believe that the experienced agent and the, the proven agent, for lack of a better term, um, is going, uh, going to do more and more deals and become a, a bigger and bigger part of real estate. So what I look at in my own organization is what, what does my business need to look like to get into to get into business with the best agents, with the best right. agents of the business? Right. And um, what who do I need to look like? What do I need to look like? Um, what offerings do I need to have? What 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 is our company? What is the company that attracts the best agents in the business look like? And so that's those are the questions that we're asking as we as we head into um, head into 2018 because the reality is you know a real estate team is really good at um, helping a brand new agent become successful fast. Yep. But once they become successful, oftentimes teams fall short of really empowering that agent to the next level. Mm. And you know uh, the ways that we cheat the system is we get them into leadership opportunities, we get them into you know management <laughs> things like that. But how can we really, really empower um, our best agents to be even better and to be able to build their own their own pipeline, their own book of business long term? And so. We look at that as a as we. I've started to see myself as and, and our business as a catalyst for them to build their business. So right. how what how does that look different than the than the real estate team that I had last year going in going into going into next year? Right. So, so you're not focusing in on oh, there's this new like virtual reality is going to change the world. It's, well, what, what's going to happen you... is I'm I'm banking on um, 
I'm banking on companies that have the right integration abilities, right? So yeah. when you re- when you look at um, virtual reality, which I mean, it's no joke. I mean, it, it will be a part of, of real estate, uh, you know, and and AI, no question, it's already becoming yeah. a part of real estate. Yep. Um, and you, and you look at you know all of the all of these new technologies. It's like man. I can try and go tackle that, or I can try and freak out, freak out about how I'm going to have yeah. all the best offerings in the industry. Or what I can do is make sure that I'm in partnership with the best companies. And, and the best companies um, in tech these days are the ones that are open, in my opinion, are open to integrating. Yeah. Um, so that they don't have because what we know, Gary Keller. I keep bringing up Gary. Gary is is has been my mentor, role model from afar, and yeah. mentor for you know, years yeah. and years. So I'll continue to bring him up. Um, but you know, when, <coughs> when Gary, uh, um, wrote, wrote a book called the one thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, the concept behind the one thing is, is focus, right? It's like, mm-hmm. if you want to, if you want to be mediocre, go wide and do a bunch of things. <laughs> right. If you want to be really, really amazing, yeah. go deep. Yeah. And, and I, and I work, I work hard to apply that concept and to find places in my life where I haven't applied that concept, yeah. you know, um, for example, well, we, I could talk about this topic all day, but when, <laughs> when we when we get, when we when we go back to technology, it's like, you know, what I love about Boomtown is y'all have been so clear about this is who we are, this is what we do, yep. and we're gonna open up our API and integrate with companies like Dot Loop, right. companies like Mojo. I remember right. for the longest time we were asking you, please build a dialer, please build right. a dialer, and you you know you guys uh, yeah you came out and you said you know what <laughs> you guys seem to all be using this one yeah let's integrate yeah. so that you can just so that they can talk to each other. And I think that's spot on where we're heading next year as a company and the world in general. It's like we do CRM, we do lead gen, we do what we do really 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 well. Yep. And we don't do transaction management and we don't do these other pieces of the business. So, but you still need them all, yeah. right? You still have them in your business. How can you get them to talk to each other? I mean, they just need to be to, talking to each yeah. other. And our goal is, is still to, our mission is to make real estate agents successful. Yeah. And if we can do that, if part of that is, is a more of an ecosystem based, you know, technology ecosystem, then API driven, if you will, then that's yeah. what we should be doing. Yep. And, and I love that. And that's, you know, with, with the Keller Cloud, um, I, I love that that's where, you know, Keller Williams is headed. Yep. It's rather than everybody needing to compete with each other on everything, um, actually some of the smartest people in real estate are, are deciding, let's let's be really clear about what we're the best at yeah. and let's figure out how to how to play with all the, all the best players to bring yeah. the right suite of tools to the agents. Yeah. And again, it, it comes back to your, you as especially as a business owner, we're doing a disservice to your your business and your agents and the people that work for you by saying, you know, I'm not going to use the best of breed of all of these various types of solutions out there. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the world we live in. That's definitely the world we're heading towards, I think, from a tech perspective. So, yeah, um, that's right. That's exactly right. So the world is changing, man. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the landscape is changing. It but, is. but the things that are the things that um, may never change, you know, are. And, and we'll see, but I, I know to be true more than anything that that when you're consistent over time, you'll experience the best results. Yep. Success is boring. It's not sexy. You um, said it. Uh, and and, and, and uh, success leaves clues. Follow models. Follow. Mm-hmm. You know when when you know I, I when the when over fifty percent of of Wall Street Journal's top real estate agents all use the same CRM. <laughs> there's a. <laughs> That's I wonder a clue. which one that is. Which one? Yeah. I don't know if I've if I've heard of that. No, one. but I mean that's a clue, right? I mean <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. what, what that's I mean that's ultimately what caused me to get, yeah. get get on the system was I realized if this is what the top people are using, there must be something behind that. Absolutely. You know? and, Absolutely. And, and 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 you you also said something to me a while back. I think when we were doing the webinar, you said something like success happens slowly, and then it happens. Quickly, gradually right? and then suddenly. That's gradually right. then suddenly. That's exactly right. Success is gradually and then suddenly, and that's the compound effect. And that's what I was about to say. It's just like building your database. Yeah. So, um, that's exactly right. Well, so, any uh, any closing thoughts? Anything? You, any words of wisdom? You've, I think you've had about fifty words of wisdom already. <laughs> so. You know, I, I think that that um, for for a real, you know, most people who have a Boomtown platform are either have a big team or. Are, are working on building a team and I just want to just send a word of encouragement that it's hard 
it, no, and and, I, and I mean that is that is that building any building Boomtown is freaking hard, man. Still I went, hard every I day. I went and saw y'all's office. It's uh, it's like super cool looking, but <laughs> you can tell it's hard. It's not easy no. to build something great. And and every day I get my ass kicked. <laughs> every day, man. Like I people are like, how's it going? <laughs> getting beat up, <laughs> right and left. I'm getting beat up, and and it hasn't ever changed. But what's happened is my 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 peaks get higher and my valleys get higher uh-huh. right and so i still have peaks and valleys all the time i i, I still have my valleys right sure my, but but they get higher they get better they get they get easier to handle they get right. more fun and um i just want to give that word of encouragement that if you feel like it's hard you're probably on the right track <laughs> because it is hard but continue to follow follow the models and um you know somebody once told me a model is not a menu so you know, mm. picking and choosing may not may not uh, get you there, but but <laughs> right. you know it, it's it's hard, and it's and the you know the the trait that you'll find from all the people at the top of anything is that they don't give up, and so you know hang in there and keep pushing, keep driving. The only thing that's going to stop you the eight inches between your between your between your ears. So. Awesome. That's it. Tim, thank you. Absolutely. We didn't get in the wreck. Enjoyed it. No, we're not yet. We still got to get to our <laughs> destination. still got to get to our destination. <laughs> but Tim, again, thank you. And uh, and we will see you guys in 2018. Don't give up. Thanks Words for of wisdom. Thanks so much. Yeah.